Gore Screaming Show has the best depiction of a cannibalistic clown monster with the body of a machine and the mouth of a devil. One with undying loyalty towards his user Yuka, a young girl with the face of an angel and the soul of a demon. He's quite the iconic figure. <laughs> Hi, my name is August, and this is Gore Screaming Show, a visual novel that shows you the amount of fun the physical personification of Mad Chaos can have. Content warnings ahead, as from the ominous red tinting, to the giant floating eyeballs, to the disformed body sprites, to the graphic, uncensored gore fest, this visual novel sure loves to have fun with its insane delusions. There really is no easy way to discern truth from reality, as the writing swallows you up in its chaotic illusions before you know it. All while Mr. Gore Screaming Show himself, hands up one hell of an act. After all, this was developed by Black Scythe, the same people who brought you Sadistic Blood, a bloody vampire torture gore fest. Make the right choices, otherwise you'll see the heroines being absolutely devoured in some of the most fucked up psychedelic endings. Blood, guts, and intestines, and fleshy dicks everywhere. And just to get this out of the way, even before considering the absolute bloodshed, the rough treatment of some of the heroines here may be too problematic for your moral conscience. For this title is directed by Ueo Matao, the same director behind Sadistic Blood and Dead and Aegis, someone who shows no hesitation in displaying some messed up scenarios, for it's their punishment for failing to overcome their insecurities. Despite what you may think, Gore Screaming Show isn't just a psychological horror thriller trip, but it's also an intimate character-focused romance. Our story begins with our main character Kyoji returning back to his hometown. There he's met with a terrible situation, having to reconnect with his old friends. A total nightmare in its own right, as if the monstrous harboring of fun wasn't the only problem. A lot can happen in the span of a couple of years, and the beginning of Gore Screaming Show establishes the groundwork. You got Akane, a traditional tomboy slash out going childhood friend, there's Aoi, a very quiet and withdrawn individual, one that secretly listens to hardcore death metal, Kika, a prim and proper girl with a couple of hidden personal secrets herself, and then there's our good old fashioned school bully that thinks he's the king of the world. Horror Screaming Show takes a bit of time to get really going. The common route has you slowly redevelop Kyoji's relationships. So while the threat of Yuka and her clown persona slash stand looms ominously in the background, they don't start causing psychological guilt trips and chaotic delusions into so much later. Doesn't mean she can't throw out some nail-binding slander, though. It's pretty amusing to see Yuka gaslight her competition while her cannibalistic wingman helps her in the many insane yet oddly humorous scenarios. They, quite frankly, do an amazing job at it. For the best way to break someone isn't through munching on their bodies, no, that's simply not delicious enough, but accurately nailing them as attention whores, wastes of space, and sluts before killing them. I mean, Yuka didn't do anything wrong, it's merely their fault for getting in the way of her one true love, honestly. <laughs> Meanwhile, the visual novel does a great job of showcasing the heroine's growth, especially Kyoji. He's a pretty emotionally stubborn guy. I found his impulsive outbursts annoying and his blatant refusals unreasonable. But then again, he's an immature kid who doesn't realize the consequences of his own actions until it hits him right in the face, and that's something worth watching. The girls he meets all go through some pretty emotionally traumatizing stuff, all caused by their own internal struggles. So it's up to Kyoji to step up to the plate, of course, with some help along the way, because there really is no outclassing Kyoji's adult role models. Yamiko might be a train wreck of an adult caretaker, but her emotional intelligence, clear thinking, and fashionable outfit sense clears everyone by miles. And let's not forget the absolutely raddest big bro who's here to pull a bullet in someone's head, with no hesitation whatsoever. It's thanks to these two's influence that Kyoji is eventually able to prove himself and help the heroines through their deeper issues, and all that other cutesy romantic couple stuff. Otherwise, well, I hope you're a fan of raw as fuck bad endings.
There's no enforced reading order, but I would recommend reading through Akane, Aoi, and Kika's routes in that specific order. I find it sets the overarching pace nicely that way, as Gore Screaming Show drip feeds you information about what's really going on with Yuka and Gore, as completing those heroin routes unlock the final two routes, the ones that finally give you their story. Because despite Yuka's childish rampage, she does have a reason why she's doing all this. There's a lot of depth packed into this tiny girl. But does it excuse murder? Well, I know someone doesn't think so, and is willing to do anything in the name of revenge, but is that right either? It's this central idea that drives those last two routes, making them the best parts of the whole story. It's truly unfortunate, because at the end of the day, all of this was the consequences of some people's actions coming back to bite him in the ass, even from the distant past. To summarize, Gore Screaming Show is about a girl terrorizing a small town with her monster sidekick, and she's really good at it. As a psychological horror thriller, it's very good. Not just from its metal as fuck bad endings, but its crazy delusional sequences, and of course, Gore Screaming Show himself. However, Gore Screaming Show dives a lot more deeper beyond its gore and horror to prove itself as a great coming of age drama. There are some exceptionally strong concepts and thematic messages that are on point. For me personally, Personally, there are a couple of nitpicks I do have, the slower common route, some particular H scenes, and a shaky foundation regarding Yuka and Koji's relationship, but in retrospect, Gore Screaming Show has a lot of strong merits to it. Gore Screaming Show gets a 5 out of 5. If you're looking for a psychological horror title with a great story to back it up, I would check out this one, given you can stomach the gore and the H scenes. That said, if you bought the Steam version or the GOG version, you are buying an incomplete version of the game for content reasons, obviously. You can restore the full version over at Just USA or buy the complete visual novel there. But if you've read Gore Screaming Show already, I would highly recommend checking out my Dead and Aegis review up here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.